I think they're the same tools. They're very similar. You're at, but you know what's funny is smaller package. Your tools are bigger. <laughs> so Nick. Hey, Joe. Hi, episode 12. Episode 12. We're here again, and we still don't know what we're doing. Today, we're doing things a little bit different. August is a terrible month for movies. Terrible. We decided uh, what seemed kind of fun was to do a 2018 mid-year wrap-up. Mid-year wrap-up, kind of like a year in review. Obviously, a lot of movies that we didn't get to that have happened throughout the year. Maybe we'll do this again at the end of 2018. Today, I'm drinking margarita. I'm drinking sweet tea. So what are we doing? So we're gonna take uh, a couple uh, uh, these dinosaur excavation dig kits, and we're gonna dig out the skeletons and make dinosaurs, and then clay them up and turn the skeletons into dinosaurs. Nick has this T-Rex kit, and I have a much larger. Yeah. I'm sorry yours is so small. It's not the size that matters, it's what you do with it. Yeah. That's what people tell me. <laughs> Um, I want to do a Brachiosaurus, Nick wanted to do a T-Rex, uh, I got us cl uh, colored clay. So let's time this mess. We're going to be covering a few movies, and in each of those movies, we're going to cover every single spoiler. Or most of them. At least five. So let's dig in. Literally! Ooh, you get tools, yeah. We're going to make a mess, aren't we? Oh, we're making a mess! He's going to go great with our volcanoes. Is that... We will time code this episode down below in the comments uh, so people can skip to different movies. We're gonna talk about A Quiet Place, Black Panther we're gonna cover, Tomb Raider, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Deadpool 2. Uh, of the movies that we haven't touched upon this year, any place that you would like to start? I'd like to start with A Quiet Place. Oh, despite all the hype you know, that I heard about this, I, I saw this recently, Okay. and I think it lived up to it. The actual spoken dialogue of this movie could fit onto two pages. I'll be honest, I think that's actually one of um, one of the most amazing things of the film. In general, when you're writing a script, it's it's essentially um, a... <laughs> it's essentially a minute per page. This is a movie that does not follow that structure at all. A lot of the brilliance is a lot of the strengths of that film is that it is really just it's a silent film and it works. That without essentially without dialogue, that they uh, they craft and create um, character development, that they create plot, that they create... Just, they, they do everything you need to do in a movie without ever speaking. And that is f***ing brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, still, there is plenty of dialogue taking place. I just mean, not in a conventional way. There aren't very many mainstream sign language-driven films. No. The point of the film is the style, and in that sense, it was done extraordinarily well. Creature creation. I love this creature. From a creative standpoint, it was beautiful, it was menacing, it was threatening. You could tell, just by looking at it, this thing wanted to rip you to shreds. The ear flaps all around the head when it started going crazy. Oh man, that was that was beautiful. No, it was really it was really cool. You're like, I don't understand why this creature exists, but as a creature design, this is really cool. It's something different that we haven't seen before. Yeah, I'm like, this is like this really bizarre audio apex predator. Oh yeah. Ooh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. You hit something. I got a tail. Once you start to scratch the surface, is that like, you know, they, they make these points that like, you know, like the, the, the force has even become silent. Like they kill literally anything and everything that makes a sound. But at one point, uh, you would have to move on. If you're an apex predator, you're going to kill everything in your, like a shark doesn't only live like in Nantucket. Yeah. They travel hundreds of miles. Like, you know, there's only like, what, like three of them, but they're never more than a mile away. But they have kind of just apparently just sat there being like, well, I'm not moving until I get John Krasinski. <laughs> John Krasinski. Well, if we get a sequel, maybe we'll get more backstory. Maybe they yeah. are intelligent. Maybe these three that were left there... We're stationed there. I just thought it was a good, solid flick. It was enjoyable. You know, it's a divisive film. Mamma mia. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> oh. My dinosaur's head snapped off. <gasps> no. I don't think I was meant to dig down all the way. I don't think it's like that. I think mine is just like, like a, a 2D relief set into the plaster. 
Oh, excavate a relief of a fossilized dinosaur. Episode 12, we still don't know what we're doing. I'll just make uh, a, a T-Rex out of clay once you start yours. You're going to just make yours from scratch? If it worked for Dr. Wu, <laughs> it'll work for me. Listen, Nick is the new Dr. Wu. He's going to make dinosaurs from scratch. Black Panther. What, did you, uh, what are your thoughts of the uh, Black Panthers? It just feels like another Marvel movie. Uh, as far as... The cultural relevance of it doesn't speak to me. I'm glad it, it's doing for other cultures what it is doing. That's that's great. I think um, actually the cultural significance of this movie is far greater than the cinematic significance of the film. Them talking about Africa. The, what, what, what's the joke that um, Shuri makes where Martin Freeman comes up behind her? <laughs> Don't sneak up behind me, colonizer. <laughs> like, <laughs> but they make these great, uh, really great cultural jokes that are significant or are poignant. And I think that's actually the point of the film. And I mean this sincerely. I think Michael B. Jordan's dying line of the film is hallmark of the film. T'Challa is like, you know, you don't have to die. We can take you back, you know, we'll heal you, you know, it'll be okay. And he goes, I'd rather be like my ancestors on the slave ships. I'd rather die than live a slave in chains. Bro, like, that's, <laughs> that's heavy. That's a fucking line. Those are the elements that I think that, that, that raised the movie. The movie itself is Iron Man. I've created a thing, and now there's another thing that I've created because of my thing, and now I've got to fight against the thing that I've created. And it's... <laughs> Agreed. So you're really gonna do this T-Rex from scratch? You're not gonna use the skeleton. So this is gonna be the real competition. Joe, let's talk about Tomb Raider. Did you love it? Did you hate it? You know, I have actually um some pretty mixed feelings about it. Uh, the the plot line, uh, at least towards the beginning, follows the reboot of the gaming franchise. The uh, the Tomb Raider reboot. I thought actually you thought it was a good film. I thought it wasn't a Tomb Raider film. Lara Croft did not spend a lot of time in the Tomb Raider mo uh, Tomb Raider games like crying. If a character on film who was trying to be betrayed as a human being maybe has a bit of a cry, it's not a big deal. And you're right, and I'm not arguing this kind of the human aspect that they put into the movie. Have some heart, yeah. She cried several times. You look at the Angelina Jolie movies, is that she was just this kind of like nonchalant badass. I'm just so goddamn good at this that like I'm gonna smirk and do it in my sleep. I wanted her at least a little more to the center of that. Listen, and, and I say this sincerely, as a film, it's a good film. As a Tomb Raider film, it's a little... I felt like they could have had a great movie. I, I actually love that, um, that they turned what like was kind of this great ancient myth into like, she was a carrier of a disease, but she was immune. I thought that she, was really she was typhoid Mary. It was a nice little twist. There's been this thing that, that uh, Indiana Jones 3 set up, and a lot of movies haven't been able to move out of it since they set it up, of the good guys doing the research for the bad guys. Sean Connery, you know, had had done all the research, trying to, he, he was, it was his life goal, you know, to find the Holy Grail. The Nazis get his diary. So now the good guys have to stop the bad guys based off the research that the good guys did. Literally, all three of the Tomb Raiders have followed that structure. This movie really kind of accented it. Like, we're like, I'm like, we're still doing this. To be fair though, he did ask Lara to destroy all of his stuff straight away, which was a funny scene when she was like, yeah, about but, that, but, Dad. But you know, you, you know what that reminded me of? Indiana Jones 3. When, she's like, when he's like, you burned the diary, right? You didn't, you kept the diary? Like, I was like, I've seen this movie, and it was a great movie in 1989. What's old is new again. Despite all of these things, I still think it was a fun, interesting movie. Let's get clay in. This is, oh, all right, all right, all right. This is clay? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, no, I, I... This is from China. Is this like toxic waste of some sort? <laughs> I mean... Wow, this stuff is weird. It's slightly tacky. It's really lightweight. It's foamy. <laughs> it's blowing me away, this, this material. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Did you love it? Did you hate it? I'll be honest, it's a movie to really, really have a hard time having an emotional feeling about. Nude Tane. I really enjoyed it. It was it was a fun ride. I enjoyed Paul Rudd, and this was a very Paul Rudd heavy flick. I think there was more Paul Rudd in this one than the first one. I, I'll agree. I enjoyed uh, Hope. Hope was a badass wasp. She was. I liked her in her little suit. 
This movie is so silly that, you know, like that they, they, con they constantly say the word quantum. I've actually read a lot about quantum physics and I remember like I was sitting there like watching the film like like listening to what they're talking about. I'm like, I don't know if this makes sense or not. And then Paul Rudd goes, are you just putting the word quantum in front of stuff? And I went, all right, uh, all right. It's like, not just me. Okay, yeah, okay. okay we've, yeah. we've hung a lantern on how stupid this is. <laughs> it was very self-aware, which yeah. is good. I was upset that the quantum realm had a thing like a floor and gravity. That was a little weird, right? This is like, uh, we're in the quantum realm. Why is there gravity? Why is there a down? I want to know, I want specific exacting details on how she survived for 50 years in there? They sort of said, oh, the, the, the energy kept her alive. I mean, at some point, she had to poop at least once. <laughs> Is there a quantum poop pile somewhere? <laughs> so, uh, did they not watch the news? What do you mean? Prior towards uh, Thanos uh, ending the universe, he landed on Earth. And there were all these battles going on. So yeah, there was this New York landing, right? But then you would have what you would call the invasion of Wakanda. There was a lot of major things happening. Yeah, that they didn't seem. And they're and they're like and they're like you know what we got to do we got to go in the quantum realm we got to shrink down real tiny yeah because we got to get energy for this ghost chick I understand that they wanted to make this movie apart from the major elements of what was going on in the MCU but they made it kind of like no pun intended comically apart I can't believe I actually have the dinosaur skeleton and you're still gonna win this challenge <laughs> <laughs> you're really tobling this one. I don't know what you're making over there. <laughs> this is my Sistine Chapel. Deadpool 2. Deadpool had a sequel. I think it was a, a, a good follow-up to a, a great first film. We got a bigger a bigger uh, name star in Josh Brolin. Uh, I appreciated the callbacks to both being Thanos and in The Goonies. We had a strong female co-star in uh, Domino. Zazie Beetz. I mean, never heard of her before this film. We'll be seeing more of her. How about that? Oh, and a mohawk. <laughs> He's not supposed to have a mohawk. No, sorry. No mohawk. Not allowed. I was actually surprised at the seriousness of the film, but it touched on like child abuse. Even even the scenes where he's like having his weird, I don't know if they're, his death scenes like trying to contact Vanessa. I wanted to watch a movie about a guy who can get blown up and not die and this is oddly emotional. I got really confused by the ending. Uh, did he save Vanessa? Oh, the Stinger? Yeah. Where he cleaned up all yeah. the timelines? Yeah. I think they're using that as canon. It cleaned up a lot of the mess. If he saves Vanessa, then the whole movie never happened. Yeah, there's that too. The whole reason the movie happened was because she died. If she didn't die, he doesn't go to jail. He doesn't meet the, the kid and yada, yada, yada. He doesn't yada. help out the kid. Yeah. The kid stays evil. It is a bit of a paradox. One that they'll gloss over and never give you a solid answer on. So move on with your life. Um, of our 2018 movies so far, Nicholas, what would you say is your favorite? Oh. I think possibly my biggest surprise and maybe favorite. Yeah, let's do it. Would have to be uh, A Quiet Place. I really wasn't expecting it. To, I wasn't expecting what I saw, and I really enjoyed it. I thought A Quiet Place brought a lot of great shit to the table. I still think Annihilation was my favorite film of 2018 so far. Really? How about this? I'll say the 2018 summer has actually been a little underwhelming, which is why we're doing a mid-year wrap-up. It really sucks that Annihilation, which I think is is one of the most brilliant sci-fi films we've we've had all year has lost money and it's upsetting it sucks this means that like the future of sci-fi is not annihilation it's transformers <laughs> you can only make so many stupid giant sci-fi action films That's true i really didn't know what direction to go in with these legs oh man i haven't even made arms i should just make a uh, like a mounted head i think i might do that I think I do that. so i made herbert he has a lot of diseases. All right, I've mounted Sally, my T-Rex mounted head. I, I think it's gonna do it. Like, comment, subscribe, ding Herbert's bell, so you're notified when we post new content. Maybe we'll do this again for the, for the end of the year. Oh man, you're gonna hate when we do Venom.